It's Lily's birthday and Leah offered to treat her to a spa day. They arrived at the marvelous Pink Lotus Boutique Spa for their day of treatment and were sent to different rooms. One of the women received a text on their phone saying, be careful, take a look at the image. Can you tell which friend is in danger? It's Lily. The drink on that waiter's tray is definitely poisoned. She should get out of that place as fast as she can. Hello. Jonah woke up in a different timeline. Normally, he was a straight A student, but in this reality, he was a pretty bad student. His teacher put him in detention to see if his grades would get any better. Oh, no. During detention time, he had to solve some puzzles. For each puzzle he solved, he got points that would help him raise his grade. His first task was to find the difference between both images. Mm. He only had a few seconds, though. Can you help? Yep, that one on the right didn't have the scribble on the paper. For his next detention challenge, Jonah had to spot the difference between these two rabbits riding a motorcycle. Don't ask too many questions, just help him out. Yep, it was the helmet all along. Dana is a swimming champion preparing for her competition on Monday. 24 hours before the big day, she disappears. Nobody can find her. Her mother calls the police and asks them to investigate the crime and they come up with three suspects. All of them are swimmers. Hannah says she hasn't spoken to Dana since their last practice. Mm. Ashley explains that she invited Dana for lunch on Saturday, but Dana refused because she was getting her hair done for the competition. And Melanie says that she spoke to Dana the night before. Dana told her that she was feeling anxious before the race. One of the swimmers is lying. Who is it? I mean, it's definitely Ashley. It doesn't make sense for a swimmer to get her hair done before a swimming match. It will get wet anyways. Daniel is a sailor on a large cruise ship. One day the captain asked him to go to the ship's lowest deck and get some supplies. But as the man was walking down the ladder, it broke and he fell down. Try as he might, he couldn't get out. And oh no! The situation was worse than he thought. There was a hole on the ship's hulk, and water was starting to fill the lower decks. Take a look around. Is there anything Daniel can do to save himself? Yep, he could put on a life jacket and wait for the water to fill the lower deck. He will simply float upwards, and then he can climb up those stairs again. I mean, if that ship doesn't go all Titanic, right? Yeah! Amelie was exploring her grandmother's closet when she came across something spectacular. Ah. A time machine. She set the date back to the 16th century and pressed go. She spent the day exploring a local market, but people kept looking at her differently. One man came up to her and said he knew she was a time traveler. He locked her in his basement and said he was going to look for where she hid the time machine. Amelie was so frustrated she got caught and was afraid she might never go back to her real life. Ah. That's when she saw that the basement had an old piano. Do you have any clue how Amelie can use that piano to escape? That's a tricky one, but she should play it until she finds the right key. You decided you needed to go on an adventure, yeah. so you packed your backpack and went hiking the Appalachian Trail. The thing is, since this was your first hike ever, you planned poorly. Your water only lasted for a day, and you needed a refill. Oh, no. There are four sources of water before you. A pond, a lake, a juicy cactus, and a stream. Which one should you drink water from? Most cacti are toxic, so you should keep away from them. The waters from the pond and the lake are stagnant water, so this means they could be filled with stuff that isn't good for you. So that leaves the stream water. Way to go, you. Oh, yeah. It's getting rather late, 
and you realize you're lost in the middle of the forest. Your phone's GPS is not working, and you're standing at a fork in the road. You can choose between four roads leading north, south, west, or east. The path that heads north will lead you to a black hole. The road that leads south goes through a lake full of huge whale sharks. The one that leads east passes through a crater-sized hole. And the one that leads west will take you to a sky-high mountain that is impossible to climb over. Which way will you choose? You should head south. Whale sharks pose no threat to people, and it's probably not true that they exist inside that lake. I mean, they are sea creatures. Harry has spent the last two weeks in Egypt exploring ancient pyramids. He's an archaeologist, and he was looking for some groundbreaking discoveries on the history of the mummies. Inside one of the pyramids, he found a secret chamber. Written on this chamber's walls was this. If one can answer correctly, an ancient secret will be revealed. And right below this, Harry found a riddle. The next answer that should escape your lips should be the creature wrapped up in cloth strips. Can you guess what Harry should answer? Mummy! He should simply say the word mummy. Tom escaped from prison by digging a long tunnel in the floor of his cell. He had been crawling through the underground tunnel for three hours when he saw that the main tunnel was divided into three smaller ones. The first tunnel was on fire. The second tunnel was home to a nest of venomous snakes, and the third tunnel was filled with explosives. Which tunnel should Tom take to continue his prison break? He should choose the tunnel with fire. He can put the fire out with the dust from the ground and make his way to freedom. Yeah! Sierra wanted to go to her favorite band's concert, but she didn't have enough money to buy the tickets. Her local radio station was putting on a contest and the winner would get tickets to the show. All she had to do was answer their riddle correctly. She called the radio station and they asked her, Every night I'm told what to do, and each morning I do what I'm told. But I still can't escape your scold. What am I? Sierra won the tickets. Can you guess what she answered? The correct answer is an alarm clock. Sounds just about right, doesn't it? Amy woke up on an estranged island. She looked everywhere for something that could help her escape and found nothing. In the following days, she continued to look for something that could give her some direction and came across three torn pieces of paper that could be joined to make one. She put everything together and managed to escape the island by water using no other resources than the things she found. Can you figure out how she managed to do that? This one is tricky. Nothing was the name of the boat she found abandoned on the island. Ooh. Then she found torn pieces of paper that together made up a map. The map helped to guide her to the nearest inhabited island, and the boat helped her get out by water. Yes! Mirabelle walked into her father's deli and asked for a sandwich to go. When she looked to her right, she noticed something extremely out of the ordinary. Ah. Take a look at this image. Can you tell what it was? turtle is hiding under the counter. This sure isn't normal. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Ever thought your name and personality may have their own colors? Let's find out at which part of the rainbow your name feels like home. Choose your answers, track your points, and see the results at the end of the video. Question 1. Are you proud of your name or would you rather change it? A. I wish I could get it changed. B. I'm proud of my name, it's cool. C. No one calls me by my real name anyway. D. I'm indifferent about it. Option A is worth 40 points. Variant B brings you 10 points. C. Adds 20 points to your basket. And option D gives you 30 points.
Number two, how many nicknames do you currently have? A, I lost count. B, I don't allow people to twist my name. C, just one. D, my name sounds better than any nickname. If you chose option A, add 10 points to your score. Option B brings you 40 points. C adds 20 points to your account. And option D brings you 30 points. Three, do you find other people have a hard time remembering your name? A, nope, I'm unforgettable. B, even my mom confuses my name. C, I don't know. D, yes, and it bothers me. Option A brings you 20 points. Add 40 points for option B. Option C brings you 10 points. And D adds 30 points to your score. 4. What flower does your name remind you of? A. Daisies, warm and playful. B. Roses, royal and attractive. C. Lilies, beautiful and mysterious. D. Cactus, independent and defensive. Okay, add 10 points to your score for option A. Add 40 points for option B. Option C brings you 20 points. And D adds 30 points to your score. Question 5. Is your name specific to a certain gender or is it more universal? A. It is universal. B. I don't know. It's too rare. C. I guess it depends on the country. D. It's specific to a certain gender. Option A is worth 40 points. Variant B brings you 10 points. C adds 20 points to your count. And option D brings you 30 points. 6. Is it hard for other people to pronounce your name properly? A. No, not at all. B. It's hard even for me. C. Sometimes. D. Yes, and it bothers me. Okay, variant A is worth 10 points. Option B brings you 40 points. C adds 20 points to your basket. And option D brings you 30 points. 7. Which one is longer, your first name or your last? A. Both of my names are equal in length. B. My first name. C. My last name. D. My middle name. If you chose A, add 10 points to your basket. Variant B brings you 40 points. C adds 30 points to your account. And option D brings you 20 points. 8. Do you know any celebrities who share your name? A. Yes, it's very popular. B. No, nobody else has my name. C. I'm a celebrity myself. D. Just one or two celebrities. Option A is worth 40 points. Variant B brings you 10 points. C adds 20 points to your basket. And option D brings you 30 points. 9. Would you describe your first name as more modern or vintage? A. Very modern. B. Vintage. C. Actually, it's pretty ancient. D. It sounds like both. Option A brings 30 points to your score. Variant B brings you 10 points. C adds 40 points to your count. And option D brings you 20 points. 10. Does your name have any spiritual meanings to it? A. Oh yeah, my parents did the homework. B. I'm not really sure. C. Yes, and it means a lot to me. D. I don't think my name means anything specific. Variant A brings you 40 points. Option B is worth 10 points. C adds 30 points to your basket. And option D brings you 20 points. Question 11. What music genre would you associate your name with? A. Classic music. B. Indie pop. C. Rap. D. Hard rock. Option A brings you 40 points. B adds 10 points to your score. Option C brings you 30 points. And D adds 20 points. 12. How would you feel if you met someone else with your exact first and last name? A. Oh wow, a glitch in the matrix. B. 
Indifferent, it's pretty common. C, jealous. D, I would make friends with this person. If you chose variant A, add 10 points to your score. Option B is worth 20 points. C adds 30 points to your count. And option D brings you 40 points. You're doing great. Just a few more questions and you'll learn your unique color code. 13. Choose a color that you associate with your name. A. Pink B. Blue C. Yellow D. Orange Option A brings 10 points to your score. Option B is worth 40 points. C adds 20 points to your basket. If you chose option D, add 30 points. 14. What weather matches your name perfectly? A. Rainy and fresh. B. Warm and cozy. C. Cold and windy. D. Hot and sunny. Option A brings you 40 points. B adds 20 points to your score. Option C brings 30 points. And variant D is worth 10 points. 15. What element do you associate your name with? A. Fire. B. Earth. C. Water. D. Air. Option A is worth 10 points. B adds 40 points to your score. Option C brings you 20 points. And D adds 30 points. 16. What season matches your name perfectly? A. Winter B. Fall C. Spring D. Summer If you chose option A, add 10 points to your basket. B adds 30 points to your score. Option C brings you 40 points. And D adds 20 points. What food tastes like your name? A. Chocolate ice cream B. Chicken wings C. French bakery with coffee D. Sushi Option A brings you 10 points. B adds 30 points to your score. Option C brings 20 points. And D adds 40 points to your count. 18. Match your name with the most suitable landscape. A. Calm and sunny desert. B. Breathtaking mountains. C. Mysterious forest. D. White sands and blue sea. Option A brings you 30 points. If you had B, add 10 points to your basket. Option C is worth 20 points. And in case you chose option D, give yourself 40 points. 19. If your name belonged to some patron deity, what would their responsibility be? A. Love and relationships. B. Knowledge and arts. C. Warriors. D. Nature. Okay, if you got A, give yourself 30 points. Option B brings you 40 points. If you had C, add 20 points to your count. Option D is worth 10 points. 20. What personal quality is commonly associated with your name? A. Faithful and loving. B. Passionate and independent. C. Smart and self-conscious. D. Easygoing and open-minded. Option A brings you 20 points. 30 points for option B. Option C brings you 10 points. And D adds 40 points to your score. Okay, it's time to sum up all your points. If your final score is 200 to 350, your name color is red. I'm living in a material world and I'm a material girl. These song lyrics are definitely about you. You radiate health, energy, and the simple joy of just being alive. Your name says that you deeply care about your friends and family. People may perceive you as a warm and trustworthy person. Arts and science may enrich your life with new meanings. If you got 350 to 500 points, your name is Golden. It says you're a passionate and charismatic leader. 
Your bright personality lightens up the world and brings hope to even the most hopeless of situations. People know they can rely on you, but you're picky when it comes to your boundaries and don't allow everyone to use you. That's why you may feel lonely from time to time. But what can you do? The winner stands alone. Those who scored 500 to 650 points have a blue name. Your name says you're a very intelligent, calm, and mature person. You enjoy learning new things and teaching others. Sometimes, you tend to overwork and ignore your feelings. But deep inside, you stay a very romantic person, with sophisticated taste and a kind heart. People respect your honesty, knowledge, and faithfulness. If you got 650 points and more, your name radiates purple vibes. Are you even from this planet? That's the question you probably heard many times. Your name says you're a very spiritual, wise, and open-minded person with unusual destiny and talent. Your life is full of paradoxes and amazing coincidences, and you probably tend to work in creative areas. You never feel alone even if you're just by yourself, because you have this mystical connection with the universe. So, how well do you know the world's most famous landmarks? Really? Take our visual memory test and check it! Please keep the score of the answers and let us know how many landmarks you guessed right. Millions of people visit Paris every year to see the famous landmark. But did you know that Parisians, especially the artists, rejected the tower's construction back then? They even started a petition against it. They believed the building was going to spoil the view of the city saying it doesn't reflect the French taste. Speaking of French taste, countries around the world liked it, apparently. The tower's construction was finished in 1889. Since then, dozens of replicas have been constructed worldwide. The Statue of Liberty has 305 replicas. The Eiffel Tower follows its fame. Where is the real Eiffel Tower, and where is its replica? The one on the left is the real Eiffel Tower. The picture on the right is taken in Prague, Czech Republic. It is the famous Petrin Lookout Tower. Citizens were influenced by the Eiffel Tower and built the Petrin Lookout Tower only two years after Eiffel Tower's construction. It has 299 steps. Plus, it was a signal provider for quite some time until another television tower opened. This practical use differentiates it from nearly all the other replicas. Now, the Eiffel Tower is a technical and architectural success, yet it was meant to last only 20 years. Look at it now. It underwent construction, but remember what I told you about its replicas? Where is the next fake Eiffel Tower? Okay, this one is fake. The one on the left is from Canada. It is a successful replica. Would you visit it if you were in Canada or prefer to see the original one? Eiffel Tower at night. Pick the real one. The world is not as it seems. The one on the left is in Durango, Mexico. This one is on the right. It is outside Slobozia in Romania. This replica is about 177 feet, whereas the original Eiffel Tower is over a thousand feet. The real Eiffel Tower is on the right. The left one is a replica in Las Vegas. It is one of the closest ones to the actual tower. Suppose you fancy having a little more Parisian vibe. In that case, you can see the image of the Paris Opera or Louvre Museum nearby. Yet you cannot admire the actual painting of the Mona Lisa in Vegas. Moving on to Italy, which one is the real Trevi Fountain? Yep, the left one. The Trevi Fountain is in Rome. You know, the one in which millions of tourists throw coins every year? The fountain is a lofty 85 feet tall and 65 feet wide. The replica is again in Vegas. Vegas sure likes to have a lot of famous European stuff around. 
This imitation is much more miniature, but has a good deal of resemblance with the real one. It has become a tourist spot as the one in Italy. Spot the fake Golden Gate Bridge. The one on the right is the actual bridge. It was the world's longest and tallest bridge at its time. Even though the left one resembles the Golden Gate Bridge, it is actually in Portugal's capital, Lisbon. This suspension bridge is a well-known landmark in the city. An American company was the primary contractor of the bridge. Maybe that's why both bridges look alike. The mysterious Stonehenge from the UK. Which one is real? The one on the left is real. The one on the right is from Virginia. A facsimile of the ancient site called Foamhenge. A full-scale replica made from, you guessed it, styrofoam. Leaving the mysterious Stonehenge behind, we go to a temple on the Athenian Acropolis in Greece. Back then, people constructed it from marble, unlike the imitation one made from concrete. Which one is the actual Parthenon? Yep, the left side. Centuries later, a full-size replica of the Parthenon is built. Where? In Centennial Park, Nashville, Tennessee. Is this one also dedicated to Athena? This one dates back to 1897. I mean, 19th century copycat is still a bit older, considering youngster copycats of other landmarks. Taj Mahal. 20,000 people and over 20 years of construction. This structure in India is counted as one of the new seven wonders of the world. And yes, the story gives you chills. Emperor Shah Jahan ordered this construction after his wife passed. From 1653 to our day. Can you guess which one is the actual Taj Mahal? I'll move you to the right side. The actual palace is made from marble by the people. The fake model of the Taj Mahal has bricks. The replica is in Malaysia. It's like a mini model of the real one, but from bricks. The Rialto Bridge in Venice, Italy. It is the oldest and probably the most famous bridge in Venice's Grand Canal. Can you spot the real one? Left, left, pick the left. Ah, bellissima! It was completed in 1591, a Renaissance landmark. The original bridge has been rebuilt several times since its first construction. The current version has three walkways. Two of them have outer banisters. The last one is wider, and it's the central walkway, accompanied by two rows of small shops for the tourists. Yet again, there's a modern version in Las Vegas. You can even have a canal tour with a gondola. So. Which one is real? The one on the right side. One of Italy's most visited attractions is the Leaning Tower of Pisa, made out of marble. The construction of the landmark took nearly 200 years to complete. The architect, Bonanno Pisano, was so embarrassed by it, he faded into obscurity, never knowing what a marvel it would become years later. Meanwhile, its duplicate stands in Illinois. May I present the Leaning Tower of Niles? Almost like a mirror image, huh? There are vast differences, though. Unlike the genuine Leaning Tower of Pisa, the Leaning Tower of Niles is half the size of the original. It is made from concrete, and people didn't spend two centuries building it. Now, for extra credit, can you guess what favorite food is served at both these tilting structures? That's right! Lean cuisine. <laughs> okay, let's continue with another iconic landmark of Italy. Which one of these is the real Colosseum? The one on the left? The Colosseum is an area in the city of Rome. Interesting fact time. Did you know that Colosseum is the largest ancient amphitheater ever built? It also protects its fame by being the largest standing amphitheater in the world today. 
The bulging stadium had 80 entrances. It's made of stone and concrete. Almost two-thirds of the Colosseum has been lost over time, probably because of people's behaviors and natural causes. It is a tourist site that attracts lots and lots of people every year. The fake Colosseum enjoys its fame, too. The picture on the right is also called the Colosseum. It's located at the buzzing part of the Las Vegas Strip at Caesars Palace. It's a huge venue hosting performances. It has room for over 4,000 people, but isn't as big as the original. This one welcomed people such as Cher and Celine Dion in the past. Do you remember I mentioned the fake Trevi Fountain? Well, those two fake landmarks, the Trevi Fountain and the Coliseum, are really close to each other in Las Vegas. Okay, here's the last chance to raise your score on this quiz. Which one of these is the real Arc de Triomphe? Yes, the one on the left. If you look closely at the other picture, you might see that this replica is smaller than it was supposed to be. It's because the second one is not a full-size replica. It might be tricky to spot with all the tall buildings around, but a careful eye might catch it. It's one of the well-known monuments in Paris, France, standing at the heart of the Champs-Élysées. The real Arc de Triomphe stays at the Champs-Élysées. The fake arc is located in… where else? Las Vegas. Okay, tally up your score and show me in the comments. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.